federal judge rules California cannot ban gun owners from having high capacity magazines. The judge says there's no American tradition of limiting ammunition capacity. But California Attorney General Rob Bonta argues they aren't necessary for private self defense. He has vowed to appeal the decision. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a really big win and one that we have been waiting for for quite some time. I'm talking about the final decision that has now been rendered by St. Benitez. Yes, the Honorable Roger T. Benitez, U.S. District Judge in San Diego, California. A little bit about this case for those of you who might live outside of the Ninth Circuit. Let me tell you why this is important to you. All right, this decision, and more specifically, the scholarship that Roger Benitez uses in his opinion will be used by other jurists throughout the country. Saint Benitez, and we call him Saint Benitez for a very specific reason. Saint Benitez, you know, really is probably one of the true intellectual giants on the bench. His decisions are first and foremost extremely well drafted, but beyond that, uh, they're an absolute pleasure to read. And I definitely encourage you to Google Roger Benitez. Look at some of his decisions, even decisions that frankly don't fall within the scope of the Second Amendment. Uh, he's just an absolutely brilliant writer. All right, so with that, let's talk about Duncan and what it originally started out as. So California, like a few other states in the Union, have developed initially a Magazine Control Act, effectively um, saying initially that they were going to ban the acquisition. That's really important, by the way. Ban the acquisition of standard capacity magazines, effectively any magazine that's capable of holding more than 10 rounds. This happened in the late 1990s. Now, in 2018, as a result of a proposition in California, we had what's called Prop 63. This enhanced the Magazine Control Act to now say mere possession of a magazine that's capable of holding more than 10 rounds would be illegal. Well, there was a woman by the name of Victoria Duncan who didn't particularly like that. She owned standard capacity magazines and she didn't take lightly that the state was now making her a criminal. So she sued the Attorney General of California who at the time was Xavier Becerra. So the case was known as Duncan v. Becerra and she went before St. Benitez in uh, San Diego and she said, you know, Your Honor, I want to sue. I don't like the idea that California is making me a criminal. So he said, well, my dear, what would you like me to do? And she said, well, perhaps you could create a carve out. Perhaps people who pre-existing to Prop 63 possess standard capacity magazines would be, you know, in a position of having grandfathered magazines. Well, he looked at the underlying law, and this was pre-Bruin. Let's keep that in mind. He looked at the underlying law, and he said, my dear, you didn't ask enough. The entirety of this law is unconstitutional, okay? So he negated the entire Magazine Control Act. Now, this happened on a Friday uh, back in, two, in April of 2019. The state of California was utterly shocked. They could not conceive of a jurist actually overturning a gun control statute. Well, immediately after he overturned the law, people said, okay, well, if the law is unconstitutional, um, then there's nothing that would prohibit me from buying and possessing standard capacity magazines. And manufacturers and vendors throughout the country essentially came to the same analysis and suddenly there became a flood of magazines into California. Now, the state of California by Tuesday of the following week realized that, oh my God, we, we screwed this up 
and they filed an appeal. Now, right before they filed the appeal, Benitez came out and said, I know that the state is going to file an appeal on my decision. So I am going to stay my decision. Effectively, I'm going to make it illegal again to possess and acquire standard capacity magazines. However, anyone who has relied on my decision of last week is essentially immune from prosecution. Oh, and by the way, this stay will go into effect on Friday of this week. I'm giving you a full week to load up on as many magazines as you possibly can. Now, this has now become euphemistically known as Freedom Week. And during Freedom Week, over 1.5 million magazines made their way into the state of California. It was glorious. It was like the Berlin airlift all over again. Um, in fact, we actually depleted the entire nation's supply of standard capacity magazines during that one week period of time. Now, the case was appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, went before a three-judge panel. And to the absolute horror of the state of California, the three-judge panel said, yeah, you know what? Benitez got it right. This is unconstitutional. Oh, my God. So then they appealed it to what's referred to as an en banc review. This is when a much larger panel of the Ninth Circuit listens to the case again completely de novo. They listen to it all from the beginning. Well, this particular en banc review panel had been cherry-picked by the Chief Justice of the Ninth Circuit to ensure that he had enough jurists that were antagonistic to firearms in the Second Amendment. And sure enough, the en banc review overturned Judge Benitez, overturned the three-judge panel, and said, no, 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 this, uh, this law is perfectly constitutional. I don't see what the problem is. Well, this was then subsequently appealed to the United States Supreme Court. So it was in the docket. They granted cert. They were going to hear the case. So it was in the docket. And then the, the United States Supreme Court issued the Bruin decision. So immediately after issuing the Bruin decision, they reversed the Ninth Circuit on Banc Review's uh, decision that overturned Benitez said, basically, you got it wrong. Now we're going to send the case back to you. We've given you a new constitutional test. We've given you this Bruin test. So redo your decision, but now do it under a Bruin standard. The Ninth Circuit, not wanting to be bothered or alternatively wanting to stall as long as possible, sent it all the way back to Benitez. All right. So it was starting all over again. Back in March of this year, Benitez heard oral arguments, and really specifically, he drilled in on two specific requirements from the state. He said, all right, state of California, make a list of all of the firearms regulations that existed around the ratification that would be analogous to controlling magazine capacity. Uh, and then... He listened to argument, and this is interesting. St. Benitez, our patron saint of ballistic volume, St. Benitez had um, taken testimony from a state's expert witness. Now, the state was making the argument that a citizen only needs 2.2 rounds in order to survive a, a defensive engagement. And uh, this witness claimed this by looking at all sorts of data and everything else. Benitez does not suffer fools. So, you know, he, in his opinion, which we're, we will be talking about here, he, um, he just rips this woman apart, uh, effectively calls her a fraud, challenges all her assumptions, and, and really goes to the data. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty brutal, to be quite honest with you. Um, so he also says, look, the state has provided absolutely no evidence that there was any sort of regulatory environment on magazine capacity or anything like that. So not surprisingly, he once again 
finds the uh, the statute to be unconstitutional, certainly under the Bruin standard. Well, actually, I'm going to pause for a second because he does actually do something that if you've watched some of my videos, you know has been really, really bugging me. So the various states that have been filing lawsuits, or not right, filing lawsuits, defending lawsuits against gun control legislation, have made the completely erroneous argument that the Second Amendment only protects weapons that are in common use. And the way they define common use is to say being used for self-defense. Now, they argue that this is a standard that comes from Heller versus the District of Columbia. That is what we call a lie. They th That's not what Scalia said in Heller versus the District of Columbia. He did create a common use test to determine whether or not a particular weapons system falls within the protections of the Second Amendment. And the test is, is the product, is the tool in common use for lawful purposes such as self-defense? Well, the states have been essentially modifying this to say, are, is the tool in common use for self-defense, essentially relegating it exclusively to self-defense, and then saying that self-defense is the actual ballistic deployment of the weapon, all right? You know, simply having it is not self-defense. Physically using it in a gun battle then becomes self-defense. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause this video for just a moment. USCCA, which is a sponsor of this video, is doing a giveaway, and it's really cool, all right? Now, you can find out all about it by simply clicking on the description below this video. It'll link to it. You're gonna wanna participate because it's gonna end pretty soon. Benitez just destroys that argument, okay? And he uses specific examples of that. But essentially, he sets the standard now that mere possession is in fact use and that there are other uses beyond simply self-defense that fall within the scope of the Second Amendment. So he does a great job on that. And it's something that, like I said, just from a personal level has been really bugging the crap out of me. So I'm really pleased that he... Uh, that he went in that 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 direction, um, but he does actually write a uh, a paragraph towards the end of his opinion as he's getting ready to render his final judgment, and you know with I don't want to paraphrase it I want to read it to you directly because number one it sort of typifies what the mindset is of Saint Benitez and and really shows what a phenomenal writer he is so just. To quote directly from page 70, beginning at line 22 of his opinion, the adoption of the Second Amendment was a freedom calculus decided long ago by our first citizens who cherished individual freedom with its risks more than the subservient security of a British ruler or the smothering safety of domestic lawmakers. The freedom they fought for was worth fighting for then, and that freedom is entitled to be preserved still. The guy knows how to write. All right, now, the state of California, they knew what was going to happen, all right? So immediately when he was getting ready to file his opinion, they had asked for the opinion to be stayed for 10 days to allow them to file an appeal. Now, keep in mind, they don't even know what the heck he's going to say, but they uh, they say, look, uh, if you rule in favor of the plaintiffs, we want to have 10 days to be able to file an appeal on this whole thing before the law is completely negated. Because they asked, he did grant that. It is what it is. Um, and sure enough, Friday, uh, about four hours after the opinion was released, the state of California filed their appeal with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. It's not really certain what's going to happen because it's entirely probable, quite frankly, especially with the decisions that we've been getting out of the Ninth Circuit over the last few months, that once again, they may sustain 
Judge Benitez, in any event, um, it's going to be very, very difficult for a jurist to just simply negate what Benitez has written here, all right? The, um, there, I have a very strong belief that this is going to be upheld. Um, now, Benitez does, interestingly enough, have several other cases on his docket that we're awaiting decisions on. We've got a case called Miller v. Bonta. That's a challenge to California's so-called assault weapons ban. We have a decision that we're waiting on in Rody v. Bonta. That's a restriction on California's citizens' ability to acquire ammunition. Um, I mean, there's several others. So we're waiting to see, and we suspect now that we're going to be getting these decisions fairly quickly. In any event, it's a win, and it's a big win, and it's uh, it's pretty cool stuff. So, as always, if you would like to contact me, by all means, do so at stephen at artemishq.com. And as always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe. Before you go, you just missed one of our best videos that got over a half a million views. Click right here to watch it now.